As we get started with the sump pump installation, here's just a basic rough setup here in the garage. Uh, the fittings that came with it that start from the Y down already come pre-sealed and set. You have to tighten up the rubber union fittings there. And you, of course you got to run the wires back up to the, the top of your sump. And since it's a rough picture how it will fit, we'll have to actually get the exact fitment in the bottom of the sump when we get inside the house. So I just want to set it up here in the garage first to get the right alignment. So there's going to be a little bit of mapping of the cores to get them all lined up, coming up as straight as possible. So there's no interference with the various uh, activation switches, either for the DC or for the AC pump. So now that we get ready for the sump pump installation of the house, I've already went ahead and broken the epoxy or the silicone sealer on my sump pump lid. Now, I do have a whole house radon system in the house, uh, so this may vary depending upon where you're at. And I've got a check valve that you can see right here on my line. And then there's a union coupling there. And so I'm going to be using a tape measure to measure from the bottom of my sump pit up to that. And then my plumbing on how tall I run up all my sump pump uh, apparatus has to be able to match that. So I can tie it right into the union fitting and swap it as quickly as possible. Uh, that's going to be important here. And then I have to pay attention to my plumbing setup here and unplug my sump pump. The other important thing when you're thinking about this is the timing. You don't want to do it, do it when it's raining outside or when there's a lot of water just naturally coming into your sump. So now with access to my sump gained, I've got my tape measure all the way down. And so I've got to go about 39 and a half inches, 39 and three quarter inches to get to my union coupling. So I'm going to prepare my plumbing work now before I pull the old pump out. Because when I look in the pump or the sump, I see water flowing in. So I'll have a very limited window of time to work. So I've got to work quickly, smartly, and efficiently uh, before I unplug the existing sump pump just to prevent the problem that I'm trying to head off in the first place. So now with my pipe dry fitted into my plumbing connections here, I'm going to look at 39 and a half inches and look at the marking on the pipe for where that occurs. So I can use a hacksaw to be able to cut that off to length and then I can come back and glue that together so I can drop into my assembly and make this as drop and go as possible. My hole is about 20 and a half inches in diameter, and so I think I've got a combination here that will work with plenty of slack on either side, so that the vertical exit spice uh, slot out of the sump pump cover will end up in about the right spot to get everything to fit correctly. There are some bolt holes with my sump cover that I can't rotate it too far to be able to maintain the bolt connection for the radon mitigation system. And then I've got to line up my wires, and then I'll use some electrical tape to be able to get the wires put together. I've got a screwdriver. I'll also come back and tighten up these connections where I get them set. And a nut driver ready to go to set my fitting up over here so I can move this in one quick operation. Now the next thing I do is get the backup battery system here put together. So I'm going to battery into the base of the plastic case. It's interesting how it said that this size 24 battery would fit. It looks like it's a little bit big. Let me try the cover here. I think there's still enough play in the plastic to make that fit. Okay, so now the wires that came on it here, all I have to do is connect the black to the negative and the red to the positive, and then it will be good to go on that. We don't have to actually connect, at least in this case here with this battery, the extra hardware for the uh, regular terminal connections. We're not going to have to use that, and we can just go ahead and bolt this on. Now with the lid for the case on here, we've got our charging system here for a nice trickle charge. We've got our connector for the charging unit, plugs in, and then this unit here then plugs in to the transformer. You can see here I got an alarm, so I can test that, you heard the chirp there. Float switch plugs in here, pump plugs in here. So now we're ready to go with this once we get the pump installed. One quick little thing here I've noticed here is it seems like the quality of the seals latching on this case is a little bit subpar, but if you pick it up by the side, it should be fine and not by the lead. And just for reference, the fuse that's in here is a glass, actually, I'm sorry, it's a ceramic fuse that is rated at 
30 amps, 250 uh, VP. Model number 314 from whatever this company is. There are no extra fuses provided with the unit. Hopefully you never actually need to replace the fuse, but it's nice to know that the fuse is present just to protect the electrical circuitry since this is designed to be around water. So now to prepare for the sump coming out, I've got a yellow tub here, something you might see like at a hospital. Uh, so I can set the wet sump pump in when that comes out so it's ready to go so I don't drip water all over the place. I'm going to be getting ready with my socket here so I can just drop and go. I'm going to have to lift the lid here and slide this lid off of the tube when I disconnect it. There's going to be a little bit of water that drops down that goes from below the floats, I'm sorry, from below the check valve uh, back down to the sump pump that will uh, come back down. So hopefully the water level in my sump coming in is low enough that I should have oh, about 10 minutes worth of time that I can do this. You'll have to pay attention to the, your sump size, depth, volume, and your rate of inflow so that you can make this process as quick and efficient as possible. Once you start, you'll have a limited amount of time to execute the complete swap of your sump pumps. To make preparations, I went in a couple spots and just used some electrical tape to be able to bundle my wires together. So I've got a nice little loom here of wires that's at least uh, bundled in three points. So make it a little bit easier for my cord management. All right, now to get started, I'm going to loosen my connections here at the top of my lid. In fact, I can see that will just come right off on that seal. Again, your sump pump lid may vary. And as I look down and inspect my setup here, I'm looking at what's coming in and my flow rate. And now with that cycle, I'm going to unplug my sump pump, and I am now on the clock for getting this repair swapped out. And so there, our no hub connection is now loose. With a little bit of persuasion, I should be able to get my line there removed. Now I'm going to take my sump up, my sump cover off here to pay attention to my order of my fittings and how they go on. Get my power cord out. Set my lid off to the side. And now with my lid off to the side, now the pump and the bottom pipe is going to come up. And then that goes straight over into what I had set up before. And now the next thing is to get my new pump and its set of pipes all set up as close as possible. in the sump pit. It's going to take a little bit here of organizing to get to get my, my pit to be able to get this organized in the way that I need it. And as you know, it looks like I am actually off at the bottom of the sump was apparently off by about a half inch. So we got to make a very quick saw cut here to get this uh, to go with our hub. If 
thought I had prepared for this well enough, but apparently not. fitting is together my water is still rising in the bottom of my sump now with my cords got to pay attention here I've got my float switch that's going to plug have a pass through for the pump and now let's go ahead and plug that combination into the wall outlet up top and that should come on almost right away at least I better hope it comes on right away because my water level is rising underneath that sump. Get the ground and the outlet right. And there we go. Power to the new sump pump and it is underway. We can take our radon seal that goes around. Oops, we forgot to put the radon seal around that pipe to go down. So we'll let the water pump out and then go ahead and put this radon seal in. In fact, I might do that off camera. And then I've got my wire loom. And in this case here, I look at my wire loom here. It looks like I uh, can, or will perhaps have to drill that out to make room for the extra wires. But it's good to see that it is working. Okay, now with it apart, I'm putting my seal back on my line. So that will line up with my sump lid. We'll put our no hub back on at our connection. Realign our pipes. Alright, so that's replaced. Let's plug this back in. And immediately our sump pump kicks on. We'll reorganize our wire loom here above ground. That's all organized. We've got two lines coming out here that go into our battery box, or battery backup. And then I also have a sight window that goes back into my radon mitigation system here. I'll have to come back and use some silicone caulk to be able to caulk this down. I'll use a towel to clean up some of the mess that I made when I had to reopen the system to fix my missing fitting. So now I've got the battery case, and I'm just going to move around to the back side. Go back here. And with the battery case, then I've got the ends that come out of my sump that are uniquely shaped, so I can't get this wrong for which end I plug in where. So we'll plug one end here for the pump. And the other one for the float switch. Install the power supply. And now with that on, we've got some extra cords now that we've got to build a route just to keep our extra cords here nice and tidy. I don't ha like having untidy cords floating around. So I'm gonna take these cords that come up here for the extra ones and tie those up to the post with some electrical tape. 
now with the bolts down for the lid. Now the last thing for me to do is come back and then to caulk the seal here with some silicone caulk. Okay, so here's it all finished up here. I end up with white caulk around my sump comp my sump lid. Fresh around got some gray silicone, but I have some white silicone caulk sitting around. Uh, there's the battery backup all hooked up there. You can see I've got the wire uh, all taped together in a nice loom. Added some extra caulk around the rubber uh, gasket there to make sure all the wires are sealed up because of the radon system. There's a no hub. And then as we come up, I've got my wires taped to the side of the riser pipe. And then going over to the outlet. Now at the outlet, we've got on top is the sump pump and the float switch. And then the outlet below that is the charger, or the trickle charger for the backup battery, which is all contained in the housing right down there. And so this is a nice clean install here. Not many excess wires floating around. Just routing them up using some electrical tape. And you saw maybe have to make a quick emergency saw cut there. It's better to have your pipe a little bit too long than too short, because that would have been a whole different problem for me to solve. Simple saw cut got that, and we are all good to go and working, and I'm actually noticing that this is quieter than the Zoller pump that I took out of the sump pit. So I hope you found this useful in replacing your sump pump, uh, or found it useful about the Barracuda backup sump pump system, and have a great day. Bye.